Brendan Barber Sr. has been the mayor of the city of Georgetown for almost two years. I went up to Georgetown earlier today to sit down with the mayor for this edition of Quintense Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and download my free Quintense Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Mayor Brendan Barber, welcome to Quintense Close-Ups. Well, hey, Quentin. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm humbled. You Drove all the way from uh, Charleston <laughs> to get here to George. Georgetown. Yeah. And I love it here. I just left Front Street just literally right. a few minutes ago. Love the people, love the food, love the culture, the spirit. It's amazing. Well, now you are moved to Georgetown. Uh, you know what? <laughs> if God willing, I can buy a house here. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Well, that would be. Yeah. Well, I understand, obviously, you've been mayor coming up on two years. Two years, yeah. January would make two years. What is the biggest difference between 2018 and now when you think of mayor? I just think of um, consensus and relationship building, particularly in um, in our in our business community, along with um, other local leaders, and then uh, you know the, the community leaders, you know your big mamas and sure. everybody who run the run the neighborhoods, right. and, and really faith based. Yes, going there to the churches and not visiting the churches just because it is an election year, but right. <laughs> visiting the churches so you can. Get a feel from a faith-based standpoint of, um, you know, what are the needs for the people? You know, we know we know housing, yeah. jobs, yeah. and uh, things that really matter, and just overall care and safety for folks. For folks, I know a big issue now in Charleston is gentrification. Mm -hmm. How are you dealing with that here in Georgetown? Well, you 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 know, there's a um, there's a push. What I would consider a push to look at one of our most valued uh, communities, which is the West End, which is predominantly black. But the, but the issues there are that, and I live on the West End, man. the issues there is how do we come back and, and bring value through um, home ownership? Because home ownership for us um, gives you a, a way of building equity and also a savings where you can do other things for your family. Okay. And uh, whether that's, you know, sending a child on to, to college or to um, a technical school or either helping them with, with some of their other needs outside of uh, their completion of high school. So, and, and basically infrastructure. Yes. So we've been, we've been investing a lot in our communities where we haven't invested before from an infrastructure standpoint. And, that, and that's waste management, uh, uh, where we talk about wastewater systems. Right. We've invested heavy in that. We've invested heavy in storm water because we're in the low country, right. so we've tended to flood. And then even with simple things, just like street lighting, right. moving on to LED bulbs and what have you. Sure. And then partnering with um, organizations like Habitat for Humanity, right. not only to build homes, but now to start repairing homes. Mm. Um, in, in that part of the city which I live in and also um, United Way. But then on the other hand, um, the rest of the city folks have to understand when we start developing and talk about economic development, you have to develop your core commercial district. So we've done that um, rather well. We've increased um, what we call um, populations within the, within the business core area during the uh, business hours, which they're benefiting because that generates more revenue for the city right. in which we could do other projects. projects. So overall, um, it's been one of those things where we deal with it from a community standpoint, understanding all the communities that comprise the city of Georgetown itself. So, so you talk about development, and I, I've asked a lot of these people this in Charleston, but what incentives do you hope the developers will bring well, that you have to be careful because it depends on on which section of the city you develop. Okay. There are certain sections where you get developed where you have homes that are that are in the price range where if you if you're medium to a little higher, um, what we call middle income, right. that you can afford those homes. But then on the other hand, you have to look at multifamily units, which we have been. Um, blessed to uh, work with some developers that are going to put in a 128 um, apartment units and that's for um, what we call workforce okay um, our workforce population then we have another 42 units going up for our 55 55 and over community 
So when you look at that kind of balance and you talk about developers, you have to work within our within our policy, within our zoning to make sure that they're there that the best interests of your residents are being served when it comes to developers, even though you give them incentives. Okay. So instead of this massive overbill to carefully plan how we develop. What zoning laws in the city of Georgetown would you tweak right now if you had to? Setbacks on the West End mm. to take all the lots that were there from the original layout that were all buildable to go back to those setbacks so we can put in those those small homes that once existed in the historical West End because it is a historical even though it's not registered. Mm -hmm. But those are the things we would do is to make buildable lots. Now people can go in and get finance. Sure. Or finance. Sure. Once you get a buildable lot, then you can you can go to the bank yeah. and say, Hey look, I'd like to place put a lot of I mean a house on there. So those are some of the things we're beginning to work on is to look at how we can take irregular lots and make them buildable lots. Buildable lots. And another thing I've asked a lot of the you know lawmakers and politicians in Charleston is this and it, it, it deals with housing. How do you describe it, Mr. Mayor? Is it affordable housing, workforce housing, or attainable housing well, in your mind? Well they all one and the same. Because I mean it's just a spin on, on which term you want to use. But my thing is, and in, in, in having been at the uh, National League of Cities conference, right. you know, when we talk about housing, whether it's, whether it's renting or ownership, people shouldn't be spending over a third of their income on housing. I mean, think about it. If you spent over a third of your income, monthly income, just on housing, where does that put you with the rest of your budget for yourself and your family? Okay. So to get housing costs down, we have to make sure that what's affordable, and that's the key word, what's affordable for the average working person? Sure. Or the person that's just, just making what we call a livable wage, whether that's hourly. Okay. You know, folks who, who drive to the beach. A ride to the beach to work right. in the hotels and the restaurants. Sure. Can they afford ownership of a house based on their salary? And you can adjust it. That's where the city, along with financial financial institutions, have to partner along with other organizations to make it affordable. Make it affordable. So, when, from a from an income standpoint, you don't want that percentage to go over a third of your income. Okay. Brothers rent are oh, yeah. a mortgage payment. Right. And you talked earlier about obviously wastewater management. I want to talk to you about the city's stormwater plan. The South Strand News reports that the city of Georgetown's stormwater management plan is on hold after a motion to adopt it was voted down 3 to 3 during the November 21st City Council special meeting and right. workshop. What motion would you have put in place, Mayor? Well, I think it, it didn't come down to, I think the vote was split, but it was split due to the fact that um, sometimes, from a technical standpoint, particularly an engineering standpoint, when you present it in that language and that <laughs> and those terminologies, sure. um, it's a little. Sometimes it's hard to process. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is um, we've gone back to the drawing board, and uh, each each council member has um, a scheduled appointed time to sit down and, and talk to the engineer, the city administrator, and the finance director sure. to go through the plan, to look at it, and to see where the majority of the funding for the, well, the majority of the money is going to be spent and the projects for that um, stormwater management plan. And I think that's, that's helped a lot because I've heard in the past few days that after those meetings, oh, yeah. now there's a better understanding. So sometimes you just have to clarify things. You have to break it down so that, um, you know, I'm a lay person. I'm not, a, I'm not an engineer. So please break it down, not in engineering terms, but break <laughs> it down to where I can understand it. And, of course, I, I was absent at that meeting. Sure. But I think it's just, it just comes down to um, how do we effectively take that technical information along with the financial information and relate it back to the folks who are you know who are the policy makers policy makers but that funding how would you divide that right now if you could well right now the overall is you know it's 20 million plus but that's the 20 million plus is not 
It's not impacting the budget as of today or next year. Mm. It's not going to be a $20 million commitment for this year. The projects will be phased in. Okay. And that's going to be through a series of options of uh, maybe even other, other funding sources to, to actually get approved. But when you look at the overall scope of the project, that's going to be years to implement and complete those projects. Just let's say out of, out of the 10 um, projects that have been identified, maybe one of those projects might take a couple of years to, to complete. So it's not that everything's going to be done within a relatively short period of time. Period of time. Yeah. But what are those other funding sources that you're looking at right now? Well, it could be state, federal government. It could be, um, you know, Walkmore Regional Council of Government. It could be, you know, our, um, when you start talking about storm water and, and dealing with um, right-of-ways right. through the state Transportation sure. Department, Department of Transportation right. of South Carolina, for the state of South Carolina. There are all types of things that could have happened or could occur, but we won't know until we start negotiating at the table. At the table. So that twenty million might not be a true twenty million. Okay. But you know what? I don't know that. Okay. And when would that negotiation start in your mind? Well, as soon as um, the stormwater management plan passes. Passes. As soon as it passes, then um, you know the folks who who are the experts in that area, your administrator, your engineer, your finance director, then we can start looking for how how this would be funded. Funded. Um, you know, whether it's partnerships or what have you. Okay. And the South Scram News also says that the almost 20 million project would have raised stormwater utility fees for both residential and commercial customers. Residential rates would have risen from $6 to $8 a month. Right. And commercial properties would have been charged according to the impervious surface. Yes. What is that right now? That's a, that's land that's that that no structure is on. Okay. But folks who own that property would have to pay a rate. And really, we're behind as far as that rate structure is concerned. So we've been high, behind for years and really never addressed those uh, the rates. So those rates would come in to help you know, partially fund that, that project. So we're just trying to catch up because so, for so many years we've been behind. Okay. And that's, you know, overall when you look at your rate system, particularly sure. for your utilities, because right. you want all your utility departments to be self-supported. Okay. Yeah. And how, how soon would you bring that up to city council? Well, as soon as um, there's a comfort level with staff and the policymakers, our city council members, yeah. Then we can bring that back up either on uh, this month's um, regular meeting agenda or even January. Oh, January. Okay. Okay. And, you know, I'm wondering too, you know, since I'm here in Georgetown, I know there was like a hotel being built here. Yeah. <laughs> can you talk to me more about that? Well, from my understanding, um, with the developers, um, they're going to present architectural drawings to our building and planning department. Sure. Um, relatively. I, w I would say in the next few weeks, and we'll go from there because it is a it is a private development that's going there, and that's going to take place um, in the place of the uh, Georgetown Times, which is going to be right on the waterfront. But the city, on our behalf, we're doing some things from an electric utility standpoint to uh, to be ready for that particular construction site. So we're moving uh, transformers that are on the river oh, yeah. bank over across Front Street on higher ground so the flooding wouldn't impact that area and as far as electrical outage. Oh yes. Well that brings me to my next question. When the hotel is actually built, how many jobs and, and really much I mean, money would you hope they will bring into the city of Georgetown? Well, from, a, from a hospitality standpoint and accommodations, um, they're probably going to employ maybe about about 15 people, mm -hmm. and that's included. That's I don't think it's including the management. Oh yeah. But uh, what's what's coming to Georgetown from a light industry standpoint? That's going to take place um, <clears throat> within the within the next month and a half. Is we have a light industry that's coming in that deals with uh, carbon fiber and, oh, yeah. and, and 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 actually manufacturing other <clears throat> parts and materials from that carbon fiber into stronger plastics, which would um, be stronger than steel, and that's going to bring in what we call sustainable jobs, mm -hmm. and that would be anywhere from 74 to 75 jobs, and uh, hopefully from a timeline standpoint, realizing that that particular 
um, light industry is going to be within within the city limits. Sure. So that's going to anchor what we call the south end of the city, mm -hmm. which is 17 going towards um, Mount Pleasant and sure. Charleston. Sure. But it's going to be it's it's part of the city. And just think of the anchor there, because now you have having what we call a first, second, or third tier supplier right. that deals with the major corporations and manufacturers right. in the Charleston area working in Georgetown. So that's going to open eyes to other small companies that um, supply products and materials to the other companies in Charleston and say, hey, look, you know, we can come to Georgetown. And increase our revenue, or plus have economic development along with providing jobs. Jobs, and I know you're probably thinking about this right now since it's December. But can you actually give me a preview of the state of the city of Georgetown address that you're going to address city council with? Well, actually, uh, we just had the state of the address, uh, um, state of the address to uh, the George City of Georgetown community, and um, I wasn't here for the actual address but I did a video shoot oh, yeah. and introduced our city administrator oh, yeah. Dr. Um, Sandra Udice. Yeah. So she really went over all the bullet points and um, in all due respect as 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 a policymaker, you know, we're here to support um, everything we're doing from um, our our TIF district, oh, yeah. which is the, you know, tax and minimal financing district. Right which we have um, partnered with the school district and the county on. Sure. So that's going to bring additional revenue to help us along with um, providing infrastructure and other needs throughout the city. That's amazing. Just, and, and if you think about it, um, within that district, there's already an office facility going up on Church Street. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that's the corner, I believe, of um, Church in Orange or Church in Scriven, right. where um, you're talking a three-story financial uh, facility, and um, that's over $1.5 million in that building that's going up. And that's going to be a big improvement. That's the first part of the TIF district that, that we're seeing an impact on. Impact on. So when you think about that, and then you think about the, um, the dredging of the Inner Harbor, right, which is important for a port city. We're the third oldest city in, in South Carolina, right. but we've been a thriving port. But now we're we can't compete with Charleston. And we don't want to. Um, we we don't want to bring in ships or, or bulk ships. We just want barge traffic along with our other um, commercial fishing, shrimping, and then our recreational um, boating because we, we want it to be a working waterfront. And you've been on the waterfront, yes. you just told me. Yes, sir. But that, chip, that part of the waterfront that you see, um, it needs to be dredged because in the, in the 40s, in the 1940s, the Army Corps of Engineers made a man-made cut, oh, yeah. which created Goat Island, but it also created a problem with silting the inner harbor and the harbor itself. Oh. Because Georgetown was always a natural harbor. Right. And the current from the Sanford River always flushed that out, mm -hmm. and there was minimum dredging. So that's what we're working with, and our partners at the federal level, the state level, um, we, we've all formed Team Georgetown to address those needs. That's so amazing. Yeah. Well, the Honorable Georgetown Mayor Brendan Barber, Sr., thank you for your time, and welcome to Quentin's Close Up. Thank you, Quentin. It's been a pleasure, and please come back. I'm coming back. Let's do this again. And God willing, I can buy a house here or something. Yeah, next time we can do the interview on the waterfront. There you go. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right. Yeah.